Hello and welcome. I am Exolite and this is my channel. Ned Baker was described as a strange old man. Before he was old enough to be described as a strange old man, he was described as a strange guy. And before he was old enough to be called a guy, he was called a strange kid. And so on and so on. As a small child, Ned had an imaginary friend whose name was the Crying Boy. When Ned was a teenager, his mother sometimes caught him talking to himself, or rather, another person, it seemed to her, some being. And when asked about it, he would sometimes say that he was just thinking aloud, but Ned's mother would hear him ask questions and then pause for an answer. It didn't feel like he was talking aloud to her, so she once inquired if he still had his imaginary friend. Ned snapped at her, saying, Of course not. I'm not a child. And besides... Sometimes those friends you call imaginary are much better than the people you encounter in your day-to-day -day life. And Ned's mother would drop it. Ned's father, on the other hand, wanted nothing to do with it. He was embarrassed when the teachers would ring up and tell him that Ned was whispering to an imaginary friend or drawing pictures of the crying boy. Ned's father was a yeller. He would demand that Ned pull his head from the clouds and act normal, damn it, or you can be sent to a boarding school and see how the boys would treat you there. They'll knock this imaginary friend right out of you. So, Ned began having the conversations in his head when he knew that people were around. One night, when the skies were darkened by clouds and the fog was slowly drifting in, Ned was walking home from the bus stop when he passed two young men. They were sitting on a stoop smoking cigarettes, and one called out, Hey, old man, who are you talking to? The other stood up. Yeah, are you talking to us? You have something to say? Ned hadn't realized that he'd been speaking aloud as he'd gotten off the bus and was shuffling his way home. Ned worked as a dry cleaner. He liked the job. He was in the back. He never had to interact with customers and was quite diligent in his work. He took great pride in his expertise and reputation of being able to get out any stain in any material. Ned began moving a bit faster. He had his hand firmly on his cane as the boys jumped off the stoop. Just looking for trouble, he murmured. No need to get upset, he whispered. The dense air and the stillness from the lack of cars passing by made it easier for the young men to hear him. What was that, old man? Snapped one. The man, 21 or 22 years old, guessed Ned. His hair slicked back, Levi's a white t-shirt, a leather jacket, dressed nearly identical to his friend. Did you tell me not to get so upset? Asked the other one. Ned was only a block away from home as he tried to shuffle faster. Stop it, he whispered to himself. I'll be fine. Hey, Gramps, said one of the young men. You aren't telling me what to do, are you? And Ned could hear them on his heels. Suddenly, Ned stopped and turned around to face the boys. <laughs> Tough guy, huh? asked one as the other one flicked his cigarette at Ned's feet. Ned opened his mouth to speak as he looked at the ground, his eyes on the barely visible cigarette, mostly hidden by the fog, the red tip still burning. I'm warning you. He lifted his cane to make his point clear. I'm almost home. Now, you two get along. The two young men weren't having it, though, and stepped towards him. Pops, you really should have kept your mouth closed, said one, and suddenly the boys stopped walking. What the hell? Where did he come from? Who's this old man? Your bodyguard? And they began laughing, but not in a way in which they conveyed that they thought something was truly funny. It was a menacing laugh. Why are you crying, kid? One asked. Is this your gramps? You got any money? 
said the other. When suddenly a pitch black plume of smoke rose up from the ground around the boy and he changed. His form became fierce, baring its teeth, growling a deep guttural growl. Let's go home, said Ned. Let's go home. I'm fine. The two young men stared in horror as the figure took a step towards them. The fog was rolling up around its legs as the two took two steps back. And then, in a flash, so quickly that the naked eye could not catch it, the being moved into them. All that could be heard was a soft, whimpering sound, and Ned turned to walk home as quickly as he could. The next day, there was a loud banging on the door. Bang, bang, bang. Ned shuffled his feet, bent over a bit, still in his pajamas, and he answered the door. Yes, officers, he asked. Excuse me, we're sorry to get you out of bed so early in the morning, sir, they started. Did you happen to hear anything last night? A, a fight, maybe? Loud words, yelling? No, officers, I'm sorry. Why? Well, two local boys, 19 and 20, were, um, and the officer trailed off. The other spoke up. Murdered. Violently. Now, you make sure to stay safe, sir. Best to keep inside if you can. Ned shook his head yes, but said, Thank you, officers. I'm sure I'll be fine. Thank you for coming to my channel. If you are not already and you would like to be, please push that subscribe button. And if you like this video, please click that thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified of my content when it goes live, go ahead and click that bell. And if you would consider supporting this channel, please do so through Patreon. I will leave the link below.